Patrick McNeil back here with you at the intermission. Throughout the year, when the Eagles play maritime teams, we like to touch base with alumni from those teams because their history is a big part of the Eagles' history. And name that longtime Eagles fans would know, former Halifax Mooseheads captain, Darcy Ashley, who played four years with the Mooseheads. Star player there, Darcy, being on an Eagles radio broadcast, does this bring back memories of those heated eagles Mooseheads games from your time playing with Halifax? Yeah, they were always a treat to play in, for sure. There were some fierce battles, no matter what the standings indicated before the game. Of course, when you look at your tenure with the Mooseheads, I'm sure what stands out is winning that Memorial Cup on the team with McKinnon and Drouin. You were well over a point a game yourself that year. Just how special was that team and that experience? Because you rolled to a title in pretty dominant fashion. Yeah, I didn't appreciate it as much at the time as I do looking back now. The roster was full of some great players, and more than anything, it's full of great people right from the top, from ownership right to the Black Aces. We had a great squad, and it was fun to be around, and everything worked out for us. Now, how much do you find yourself following the pro exploits of the guys from that team? McKinnon and Duran being the players that people would most remember from that Mooseheads team in particular. Yeah, they're the whole reason I get the NHL package every year. <laughs> it's fun to watch them. Weeks is having a good year, too, in Calgary, and, and Nick's having a great year in Winnipeg, and Timo's in New Jersey now having a good year. He's had some injuries, but Nathan and Joe, it's nice to see Joe get going again. He's found a lot of chemistry with Nathan lately. I'm hoping everything works out for him in Colorado. Might be poking the bear a little bit on this one, but as I mentioned, we're on an Eagles broadcast talking about the rivalry. One of my earliest memories doing the broadcast for Cape Breton is the game in January of 2014. You had a throwdown with Justin Hache after his big hit on Philip Gowdery. I guess the legality of that would be debated on each side. What do you remember about that scrap? Yeah, it wasn't much of a scrap, I think. You just see it happen, you just react, and I jumped in and pretty well got the face beat off me, and it was only a few punches. I was just coming back from a hand injury at the time, I think. The thumb injury that sidelined me 11 games, and I thought I re-injured my thumb, so it was a tense few moments for sure after, but you don't realize what's happening in the heat of the moment, you just react. That's what teammates do, and Hashi went on to have a pretty good career himself. Now, where you're the captain of the team, I'm sure that's part of the reason you want to stick up for a teammate. How much does that mean to the players, especially some of those guys knowing you're probably coming off an injury that, hey, this guy's hurt and he's still willing to stick up for us? Yeah, well, that's something that was instilled with us whenever we were in Halifax. We all stick together, and you're only as strong as your weakest link. So I think everybody's sticking up for each other, and they got each other's back. When you're going into battle every time, that you're going to come out on the right end of it. What's unique about your career with the Mooseheads is you played there for four years, and I mentioned the Memorial Cup. And the year I was just talking about, you still had a strong team. You go to the third round of the playoffs, but not so strong when you started out. How special was it for you to be there as the rebuild was still going, to have suffered through that tough first year and then come out the other side and see a lot of success? How special was it to be through that whole process? Yeah, at the time, you don't really take into consideration the cyclical nature of junior hockey. But looking back now, even a few years before me, they put in some gruesome years, and luckily... Cam did a phenomenal job drafting and trading players in the first year, second year, third year I was there, and he continues to do so now. It makes a big difference whenever you can move assets and move players around. And for the most part, Halifax likes to keep their players until they're 19 or 20 years old, and maybe they got a chance to win someplace else and they move on. But for the most part, the roster stays together in Halifax, and I think that's a big reason for a lot of their success. You had the opportunity to look at the NCAA route because you had discussions with the University of Maine, but ultimately you'd go to Halifax. You probably don't have any regrets about that with a good career with the Mooseheads, but why did you end up deciding to play in the queue? I progressed a lot my 16-year-old year in Summerside, and I knew at 16 years old I wasn't ready to play major junior hockey. I wasn't quite big enough and fast enough, and I wanted to go someplace where I had an opportunity to play, and Summerside was great for me for a season. Well, the next year I just felt... I was going to go away either to Muskegon or luckily Halifax drafted me and that became an option and the more my family looked at it and the education package and I wanted to make sure I got my degree after hockey and that was available there. Playing at Halifax was awesome. I have absolutely no regrets about it and I recommend it for anybody that's debating whether to play college hockey or in the CHL. As I was trying to get in contact with you to set this interview up, looking through social media, seeing the different connections, and one thing that came up to me, the Eagles, with a number of players from PEI, Will Murphy we can include in that, as he's recently appeared in the games for the Eagles. Do you have any contact with the Eagles PEI contingent? Are you following our Island boys, even though you're a Mooseheads fan at heart, I'm sure? I'm really close with the Murphy family and close with Will. I had the opportunity to coach him in Bantam Major in his last year Bantam, and I coached his younger brother who's coming up who's a very, very good hockey player, too, in Major Bantam. I still stay in touch, and I was watching the game last night and talking to his father, and it sounded like he had a great debut, and he's going to be an excellent blue liner for you guys into the future. He's come a long way in the last few years. I look forward to following his career. We do hear as well, for sure, certainly a lot of excitement about what he can bring as a prospect. What's interesting is, like yourself, playing Junior A at 16 in Summerside. Talk about hockey players from PEI. You had the opportunity to play at UPEI after your days in the queue were done. How special was that to play high-level hockey in your home province? 
Yeah, I mean, once my career was wrapping up in Halifax, you have the opportunity to play in the East Coast League or go to school. And I wanted to make sure I got my education before I decided to try any of that. And UPI was a great spot, close to home, and I furthered my education. And unfortunately, there were some injuries there, and I just decided it was time to set the playing career aside and, and look at some other things, do some scouting and do some coaching and stay involved in the game. Very good. You mentioned coaching Will Murphy. What is your involvement in hockey now? Are you still involved in the game? I took a year off this year. Me and my wife recently had a baby, and it was time to spend a year at home and make sure she gets the support she needs and look forward to getting back into it here in the next few years. Well, congrats to the baby. No one will fault you for stepping away for the game for that reason. I guess the last thing we'll ask it was the main source of employment for you. I think you're getting ready for fishing season, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's right. Well, lobster fishing is, is what I do now, and I like to stay on top of things in the winter and make sure everything's ready to go for the springtime. You spend some time working alone and getting your gear ready, but you got to be ready to make hay when the sun shines in the spring. Well, that's a line of work that Cape Bretoners and PE Islanders can both relate to for sure. Thanks for this, Darcy. Best of luck with everything going forward. Yes, thank you, Patrick, and best of luck the rest of the season. That is Darcy Ashley, former Halifax Mooseheads captain, joining us at the intermission. You're listening to Celtic Kubota, Cape Breton Eagles Hockey, 1270 CJCB.